All right, let's think like that you want to learn English language. So how you're going to start? Forget about C programming. Think about learning English language. So first you will learn English letters. So I'm just going to write a few letters here to Z, right? And then with the help of this letter, we can start building words. So this is going to be our second step. For an example, let's say love. And then with the small words, you now can build sentences. So let's say I love C programming. Forget about my capitalization here. Well, let me fix it here for this one at least. So what you can understand from here, basically when we want to learn any language, we start from scratch. We start from small things. There are some key stuff that you need to learn. There are some key and important things that you need to learn before even starting making something bigger. So that's how we are starting here. We are basically starting with the letters, then with the help of letters, we are building words, and then we are moving for something bigger called sentences. So that's how even in any programming language also work. So there are some key important things for any programming language that you need to learn before moving something bigger. And that topic will be called, that thing will be called as a tokens of any language, any programming language more specifically here. So tokens for any programming language are like, it's going to be keywords. So if you want to learn any language, you need to know about this topic called keywords. Then you need to know about string for any programming language. It's another building block or fundamental things that you need to know. And then we can think about variables. We can think about data types. Of course, they're not going to make any sense at this point, but don't worry, I'm going to explain one after one, of course, with many examples. And then there will be operators, there will be punctuators. So these are going to be your fundamental things when you are studying any programming language so that you can understand somebody's code. You will be able to read somebody's code. So tokens are very important thing for any programming language. And these are some common tokens for any programming language. Now here, we are going to start with the keywords, the first one, the first token we are going to start. By the way, this punctuator actually we are already using. Now what do I mean by this punctuator? You can see already we are using double quotation, we are using single quotation, then we are using semicolon, then we are using this parenthesis, we are going to, we have already used this curly braces and later on we are going to use this square bracket. So these are some symbols that are called punctuators. In C programming, we have a special meaning for all of them and we are using them for a reason, for sure. So you already know about the punctuators. In every programming language, they have punctuator and they have special meanings. Now let's move on to the next one, which one is the keywords here. By the way, you are already familiar with string. When you have sequence of character, then we call string. Again, I can explain you that one. For an example, if you wish to use uh, A here as a string, you can do that. Even if it's a single character, you have to put double quotation you know, on both sides. If you say A, B, C, and if you put double quotation on both sides, then it's going to be it's going to be considered as a string here. Now you can use single quotation as well, doesn't matter. Again, it's going to be considered as a string here. So a string is basically a sequence of character. There can be one or more than one, or even there can be no character here, no nothing here. So it's going to be called as a null string, empty string here. So I hope you got the idea of string. Now let's move on to the topic keywords here. Now there are a lot of keywords exist in C programming. I will just copy paste few things here so you can see all the keywords of C programming that we have. Now you don't need to memorize them here. By the way, just have a look and later on you will be able to understand the reason of each keywords that we have here. So keywords are basically reserved words. They have special meaning in C programming and they are used to define the structure and logic of our C program. Now, remember one thing, all the keywords here, basically they are in small letters. And in C programming, C is a language like case sensitive. So for an example, you are saying integer is a keyword, but if you write something like this, integer, you can see here, I have started with the capital letter. It's it, basically, this one is not a keyword because C is a case sensitive. So all the keywords, they will be in small letters. Remember that. And if you write something like this, and if you write something like this, then both they are different. They are not same because C is a case sensitive language. Remember these things. 
Now, again, I need to remind you, you don't have to memorize any one of them because you will be using them a lot and you will be able to understand, like, you know, why they are used and you'll be, you know, remembering a lot of keywords anyway. For an example, already we are using int keyword, which basically means integer. Then you are using return whenever you want to return something. So you are using this return keyword already. So you are familiar with two keywords already here.